To show you how to put it on, I have myotape for beards and it's slightly different than the normal myotape because it's slightly stronger and it also has a wider piece at the bottom. You get the tape, you stretch it about 30% or so. You don't want to overstretch it because it loses its glue strength. And I'm surrounding them out and I'm gently pressing it on my face. It's important to gently press it just for a little while because it helps activate it. And this way then it's going to stay in the mouth. And because it's pulled, I can feel an elastic tension there, which is pulling my lips together. But this is safe. If the individual has obstructive sleep apnea, they can mouth puff. They need to be able to mouth puff. Because if an individual with obstructive sleep apnea, and typically it's when obstructive sleep apnea is moderate to severe, that individual may need to mouth puff during sleep. If they wear a tape that's covering their mouth and they cannot mouth puff, it will worsen their sleep apnea. And that's the last thing that we want to do. So it's very important for people who do have obstructive sleep apnea, and bearing in mind, 90% of people who have sleep apnea are not diagnosed. But if you think you have a risk of having obstructive sleep apnea, or if your partner has said that you may be stopping breathing during sleep, or if you've completed the stop bang questionnaire, and that you have a higher risk of having obstructive sleep apnea, I would say to you is absolutely get your mouth closed during sleep, but don't cover the mouth because that could increase the AHI. There are scientific studies as well supporting that. So mouth puffing goes like this. The air has to leave the body some way. If it can't leave the body through the mouth, it's going to be caught. And as a result, then it worsens breathing during sleep. So if you want to have a good night's sleep, nasal breathing support it performs the exact same functions as mouth taping but it's safer myotape.com